So hello and welcome back all of my stars. I am doing this video a little bit differently than we've done in the past. Um, this is going to be the 101 video for Halloween, talking a lot about the history of Ouija boards, where they come from, things like that. I've been wanting to do this video for a while, you guys, but the thing is, is I've been running out of time probably like many other people are, um, Halloween is almost upon us and I've been running around trying to do a bunch of different things. But I'm glad that at least I'm getting this opportunity to talk to all you guys about this because this is the first time I've done a 101 video in a very, very long time. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking a lot about the history of Ouija boards. We're also going to talk a little bit about, um, where they originate from, what the situation is with them, and then I will do some pick a cards and some oracle. I am not going to be doing an actual Ouija board representation on this channel. The only reasoning why is because I have to do what I feel is good within my spirit. I do not think it's appropriate to be demonstrating or showing people how to use a Ouija board because I think that there are things that need to be protected in an individual. So I will not be conducting any seances, asking for any famous people who passed to come back. I'm not going to be using an actual Ouija board. Um, I'm sure that most people have seen what they look like. I will also be posting onto my channel um, pretty much a picture of what one would look like or what the, the basic ones do look like. Of course, some of them are more ornate depending on where you go or who makes them. So I'm just going to, for the sake of this video, just talk more about the history. The other thing I wanted to mention is that I'm going to be posting a lot of pictures on my Instagram. So if you guys do want to go over there, it's the Astro Teacher or Astro Teacher 1590. I have that on my Instagram. I'm also going to be doing a lot of Halloween projects this week, so I will be posting pictures also on my Instagram, you guys. So just definitely go over there and check it out, and I will be posting a picture of what a Ouija board actually looks like. If you guys have not seen the Spirit Messages Pick a Card reading, definitely check that out on my channel. Um, that was basically where you pick a specific Ouija board and get Spirit Messages from Tarot. So that was also something that I did this past week. So just a couple of different other things I did want to mention also. This week, we are going to be doing another pick a card reading. Um, I don't know what I'm going to have with that yet. I'm also going to be doing November predictions, most likely on Halloween. So I might be actually posting that video then. But just so you guys can have a look out of what videos are coming next and things like that. So let's jump into, you guys, the history of Ouija boards. Now, I've had so many people message me, ask me, questions, ask me what it is, um, do I use it, have I ever used one, things like that. I've gotten a lot of questions from people um, in regards to it. Now, I have to say that Ouija boards, the only time I've ever seen a Ouija board in my life personally was when I purchased one at, I believe it was a, a discount store. That is the only time I have ever seen one, used one. Um, in my opinion, I never really thought that Ouija boards ever worked. I know that a lot of people, you know, will probably comment, well, they do this and that. I'm just talking about my own personal experiences. I also feel that it's not smart to reach out in that way. I'd like to reach out from a place in my heart when I'm trying to talk to spirit or a place in my mind, meditation, yoga. I'd like to come from a more positive area or positive place when we are talking about trying to connect with spirit. However, there are a lot of people who do believe that divination and using Ouija boards can actually help you to communicate with spirit or with the dead. I have read a lot of stuff on this, you guys. I've read books on the subject just because of the fact I was curious to know whether or not using a Ouija board is actually true. Is it psychological? 
struggle? Is it something that people go through? You know, what is the appeal about this? Is there some truth to it? So when we start to talk about the history of Ouija boards, we can take Ouija boards back to centuries ago, basically. Um, we talked a lot on the channel about pendulums, about, um, you know, dousing rods, that type of thing, used to connect with spirit. Pendulums in the beginning were used, um, you know, scrying tools were used back in ancient times to communicate with spirit, um, to talk to spirit, to learn about the past, present, and the future. Um, Ouija boards were never really introduced until the late 18th hundreds. Now, the reason for this is, is that I personally believe that because spiritualism actually entered into the world in the late 1800s, I also think that nobody really knows where the origin of the Ouija board comes from. I have to tell you, I've read a lot of books, you guys, um, a lot of things online. No researcher who's kind of doing this has ever really, really found a concise way of finding out who invented the Ouija board anyway. So that in and of itself is very weird about the history of it, but also too, where it came from, why somebody, you know, designed it to look the way that it did. You know, there's a lot of people that say it was them that created it. A lot of spiritualists at the time believe that they created it. They believed, um, you know, that some, uh, a specific person created it. There's just no way to tell where exactly it came from. Now that's weird to me in and of itself. Basically what happened was back in the late 1800s, and I talked a little bit about this in some of my other history of Halloween videos um, or history of witches, werewolves, things like that. Back in the late 1800s, there was something that was happening in the world called the spiritualist movement. And what that means is, is that there was a lot of people in the world who were trying to communicate with the dead, with spirits, with passed on loved ones. Um, you know, spiritualism was, was a very big thing back then. A lot of people just didn't believe believe in the teachings of the church and of the Holy Spirit alone. They wanted confirmation that there was something else on the other side. Now we have to understand that also the spiritualist movement took off because it was a way to kind of entertain the thought of life after death. We have to understand that there was a lot of things that we do not have today like we do. Um, you know, there was no use of computers. There was no use of technology. There was no use of explaining to others the process of death and what occurs. There was no other way to get any other type of information other than the Ouija board. So what had happened was in the beginning, the Ouija board was originally a scrying tool, which it, what I can explain by that is a scrying tool is basically used where you have a flat surface, a board of some kind, and you are going to put either yes, no, maybe, um, specific dates and times. I mean, it just really, really depends on what you are scrying for and what you are asking for. A lot of people would actually use a pendulum tool that comes down and they would be able to scry for certain information from passed on loved ones. It wasn't until 1891 that the Ouija board became extremely popular. It became popular within, uh, you know, bookstores. Uh, people were selling them out of department stores. Um, this whole situation of selling Ouija boards became a bigger and better situation to try to contact people. So if you can imagine, you have a lot of the spiritualists using the Ouija boards to contact the dead. They're claiming that they can talk to all kinds of spirits, past family members, who knows? They're basically stating that they can talk to someone when this occurs or the next best thing to do would be to have, you know, think about it. When you have something happen to you, you know, that's that's out of this world, that's crazy. Okay, maybe some of you don't want to talk about it, but the rest of you, you want to tell your family, you want to tell your friends, you want to gather people up, have a, have a party, and what we call a seance. A lot of people believe that this was occurring in their homes. They believe that people could talk to them and communicate to them through the Ouija board. It is 
blown my mind, you guys, the information that I have found about this, the craziness that I have seen with some of these researchers saying that certain people have done certain things. The fact that in February of 1891, that when these sold in department stores, these games would sell out. The Ouija boards would sell out like crazy, which to me, I think is interesting because we walk around in the world thinking that a lot of people do not believe in the supernatural or the occult or mysticism or whatever you want to call it. But apparently there was enough people, including the believers and the skeptics who were all like, let's purchase this board. Let's have a party. Let's have a seance. Let's call the spirits, whatever the story is. They were basically using the board. Now, a couple different things about what I I found out about the selling of the board. In the beginning, the board used to be made out of good quality wood material. It was made out of wood because of the fact that, that they believed, whoever this person was that created it, believed that wood could be a conduit for the other world, believed that some raw type of material could manifest spirits in the room, in the situation. I don't know if you were in a forest using it, wherever the situation was. They believed that wood and good quality wood would make the board last longer after more continued uses. So that was kind of interesting about what I thought, what I found out. Originally, this board was not used to communicate with spirits, the dead or the other side. It was originally used to communicate to find out answers about your past, present, and future. That was how it originally started. But of course, you get the people who want the seance parties. They want to show their friends and family that, hey, listen, I'm talking to, you know, cousin here, uncle here, you know, grandpa, grandpa, I'm talking to grandma over here. That's what originally started to happen after these boards were getting used completely um, by family members, by friends, um, all kinds of things were happening. Now, Ouija boards also, too, are believed nowadays um, by psychologists, by psychiatrists. I mean, the fact that there are studies out there, you guys, I don't know if you guys have ever looked up the history of Ouija boards. There are studies out there that believe um, that when a person uses a Ouija board, that they are more likely to believe in life after death. They are more likely to believe that they are actually getting a message from spirit. Um, they are more likely to believe that that is a gateway to the other world than perhaps something else, which to me is highly interesting that people think that this could be a connection of some kind, um, that it kind of shows us the difference between the known and the unknown and how our mind kind of grapples with that a lot, grapples with the fact that we would rather like to see proof than no proof at all. So that's also interesting. Those studies were conducted back in the late 60s, early 70s, um, you know, kind of when the Ouija boards had a second upcoming um, in the world. So what had happened was, was that prior towards 1891 in the first part of the 20th century, you know, seances and spiritualism were huge back then, you guys. You know, you got to understand, people people didn't have TVs. We weren't seeing horror movies. People weren't seeing any of that. So when somebody basically came to the town and was like, hey, listen, you know, did you hear about so-and-so off of whatever street uh, levitated in their house and they were able to communicate with a dead loved one. You know, people were curious about this. This was something that people believed. So what we were talking about is seances. So seances are something that is conducted with the Ouija board. It can be conducted with or without the Ouija board. It can be conducted by holding hands with a group of people, um, candles being completely in darkness, and asking spirit, whoever spirit is, to show themselves. What would happen in these occurrences is that the Ouija board would be moving around. The table would be moving and levitating 
as people were doing this. Now, the Ouija board is comprised of a board that has a bunch of different numbers on it, a, a you know, the whole letters of the alphabet, right? And we have the yes and the no's in the corners, and I'm sure that some of you guys have actually seen pictures of Ouija boards. What's interesting about this is that sometimes that uh, dial, that we call it the planchette, what that was used for was not even to be moved at all. That was used during seances to actually be able to move by itself. Nobody was actually allowed to touch the planchette because they believed that the only people who could would be the spirit um, or someone on the other side was able to move the planchette to say yes or no, spell out certain sayings or names or anything like that. Nowadays, we believe that you get a friend and yourself and you could scare the hell out of each other by basically putting your hands on the planchette and claim that it's moving. Well, back in the day, the spiritualists didn't believe that. They believed that that planchette was the only way that the spirit could communicate with other people in the room. Thus, the reason why nobody ever touched it during the seances. So that was kind of interesting for me to find out also. Now, we talk about the spiritualist movement and how this really, really kicked off with the seances and with the communication of the dead. Okay. We talk about the Fox sisters. The Fox sisters were located in upstate New York. For those of you who don't know, basically these sisters were kind of interesting. So what they did was, was that they originally started to conduct seances in their home. These sisters claimed that they could communicate with the dead or with spirit. They used Ouija boards. They used seances. They claimed that they could hear um, or see the planchette moving and be able to determine who was in the room at the time. There was a lot of speculation that, you know, they could hear taps on the walls. They could see dead people. People were getting all crazy here, wondering if it was true or not. Now, a lot of people say that it was true in regards to their abilities. Other people say that using Ouija boards and seances was a hoax. People believe that, uh, you know, people were making this up, that they were making up that, you you know, tables were levitating or that they could actually see spirit or that the planchette was spelling out something specific on the board. Um, there was a lot of people who believed that spiritualists were basically hoaxes, charlatans, that they were, you know, trying to get people involved in a different type of religion, um, you know, and it was, it was very much a, kind of a taboo thing, but in reality, there was a lot of other things going on too that were leading to this movement because people were grasping to believe something. You guys have to also understand too, back in the late 1890s, early 1900s, we also have to understand that the life expectancy was at the age of 50. Not a lot of people survived past that age, you know, and we also have to understand that modern medicine what isn't what it was today, okay? Basically, you get a cut back then, you were lucky to survive that. Um, women died in childbirth, men died in the wars, um, you know, children um, often died from obscure diseases. So when this happened to an individual, if you were told back then that you were able to communicate with those that have passed on because that was happening so frequently, a lot of people kind of took that upon themselves to be able to communicate with the spirit or there was a lot of people who would make money off of that, who would make money off of being able to communicate with your loved one. So towards the later part of the 1900s, a lot of people believed that the Ouija boards were either being used for good or for more evil or sinister purposes, such as the fact that there is a lot of talk about um, demonic possession with Ouija boards, um, talking to, you know, the darker side of spirit also. We're going to get into that in a little bit in this video. The other interesting thing that I found out about um, before we come to the more modern times of the Ouija board is that, I don't know if you guys have ever heard this, I personally haven't, um, 
is that Mary Todd Lincoln, who was Abraham Lincoln's wife, she had apparently lost one of her younger sons um, due to some type of infection or disease, and that she often conducted seances in the White House and believed in Ouija boards that she could actually communicate with her son. I found that to be extremely interesting because of the fact that that was so much a part of the culture back then, that seances were considered normal is very, very interesting to me. And that the fact that a first lady was kind of into it too, because they set the trends, especially for back then, it makes sense why a lot of people did believe that Ouija boards, you know, could help. Now, here's where it gets kind of crazy and where we talk about more of the modern type of situation. A lot of the spiritualists were condemned for using Ouija boards, for using seances. Like I said, a lot of people wanted to stop all this because they believed that it was a hoax. People were taking money from people to try to communicate with their past loved ones. Now you fast forward a little bit in time and you also have a lot of weird occurrences happening. Like people are using the Ouija board as an example. There were two younger women who were using the Ouija board back in 1912 to communicate with a dead loved one who claimed that if they killed their parents, then they would be wealthy in life. Thus, the reason why a lot of people were claiming that if they were committing crimes, if they were doing something, they were com complaining that the Ouija board was telling people things that weren't good, that weren't positive. People were trying to take things upon themselves to do things that the Ouija board had told them to do. So all of this was occurring in different situations. There was a woman back in 1922 who, you know, left a small fortune to a man who she claimed she was speaking to with the Ouija board, um, you know, and she claimed that this man was, was a passed on loved one, that she had been in many lifetimes with this person, um, you know, things like that, and that the Ouija board had told her to leave all this money to this gentleman who was out there. Um, there are cases of people who claimed, who committed murder, who claimed that the Ouija board was the, was the thing that told them to commit such murders or to commit such, you know, bad acts upon people. And then you have, of course, the small records back then of the possessions where people who have used the Ouija board would become possessed, would become crazed, would, would you know, uh, become hysterical, especially Especially women who were seeing this and seeing a loved one because women were more susceptible to these beliefs back then than men were. So you have, you know, the mass hysteria that's going on. You have people getting upset about the situations. So what had occurred was that a lot of the Ouija boards were actually pulled from the departments. Um, you know, a lot of people started to believe that as time went on into more modern times, that that type of realistic expectation to reach a spirit through a board became less and less and less. We have to understand that the world wars happened. People were just not interested in frivolous things like they once were. The spiritualist movement did die out. Um, there are still some people even currently today who do still believe in the spiritualist movement who are spiritualists themselves. We also have to understand that a lot of these great literary works and things like that came out of the spiritualist time frame. Um, you know, Dracula, Frankenstein, all these stories that we talk about now during Halloween also came out back back then because of the spiritualist movement. So as, you know, there was more modern advances made, people were living longer. It was just not as common to have seances in, in your home or use the Ouija board either as modern times went on. Now up pops the 60s or the 70s. And what is so interesting, you guys, is that there, the Ouija boards had a comeback in some type of way. And you guys can thank the exorcist for that. Um, you know, the story talks about the young girl in there who was using the Ouija board to communicate with spirits and that a demon had possessed her. Thus the reason why Ouija boards got back into the mainstream of culture because everybody was seeing that. And you know what? Just like back in the day in the 1890s, people were getting curious. Okay, so this is the situation. We see this on, you know, TV. It must be true, right? Now you got people going out to the department stores buying Ouija boards up. Um, Ouija boards were 
stop being made of wood and started to be made as plastic. They were considered a family game. Um, in other words, instead of a talking board or a spirit board or a possession board, they were called um, a family board game so that you too could communicate or, you know, use the board to ask questions about your past, present, or future instead of communicating with passed on loved ones. Now, what's easy, what's easy to say about this is that because people are seeing this, they're assuming that the same thing is going to happen in their homes. The crazy thing is, is more people, nine times out of 10 people who did purchase the board actually did believe that something would occur. Even if nothing occurred, they would keep going back to it, keep using it to see if it would occur. People do not give up on Ouija boards, you guys. I'm telling you, like, if nothing happens at the end of the day, they do not give up on using it. It is so unbelievable if you've read things about it or anything like that, that people will continue to use it even if it doesn't work. Thus, the reason why the sales were so popular back then, and then when popular culture started to use this as an avenue to kind of, you know, bring horror to new lights, especially with, you know, we talk about the Ouija movie, uh, you know, the possession that occurs. A lot of these movies will use, uh, you know, those type of demands entities or bad spirits can enter your home by a Ouija board. Um, you know, there are a lot of practitioners who believe that you have to be of a certain uh, mind frame, a certain protection, a certain situation to use a Ouija board. You know, there's all kinds of things that modern times has still kind of grappled with does it work or doesn't it. The other interesting thing that occurs here is that more often than not, it is young people who are using Ouija boards, it is not even so much older people anymore. As much as it is younger people who are interested in using the board to communicate, but who are also interested in getting a laugh out of the situation. And a lot of people believe that that's kind of cautionary because you don't want to scare someone so much to make them believe that there's something there that might not be there. Also, on the flip side of this, the Ouija board mostly has taught people to believe. People want to believe that there is life after death. They want to believe that something is out there. They want to believe that there is some type of magic in the world. And the Ouija board provides that in some type of way. Now, whether or not you believe that this is the case or you believe that, you know, this is actually something that can occur where you can communicate with spirits is completely up to the person who actually actually does purchase the board. So those are some of the past histories about the Ouija board, about how it started. The other thing I do think is interesting in this situation is that more often than not, women will use the Ouija boards more so than men will. Um, I also found that out through one of the researchers who have been working on this. If you guys are interested, his name is Robert Murch. Um, you can go online, find some of his research that he's conducted for a long time. There are also books, you guys, online about the history of Ouija, the history of Ouija board. Um, the other thing that's interesting too is when we talk about the name. The name Ouija, nobody has any clue where that name came from. Um, nobody knows who invented the board. Nobody knows where the name came from. Nobody knows why um, the board is laid out in the way that it was. You know, there was a lot of speculation back in the early 90s that someone from the past spiritualist movement had created the board um, and were afraid of being persecuted, were afraid of being looked at as being different because we have to understand that back then things were very different than they are today. You can't just be going out saying, hey, by the way, I talked to spirits, uh, you know, because every you wouldn't have any friends at the end of the day, much less a community at the end of the day if you were living back in the late 1800s. It just wasn't heard of that people would say those type of things. Um, 
there has never been any new information that's been found about who created the Ouija board, where it actually came from, or what the name was regarding. Um, there's also been some information that's been published about people who have actually had experiences with the Ouija board, good, bad, or indifferent. So that was also published about some stories that has have happened with people. If you guys are interested in that, um, I would definitely look some of those stories up. I know that some of these stories have also been been posted on different paranormal shows or different investigative shows. Um, a lot of people have done things with the Ouija board for that purpose also. So there is information out there. Now, I will also give this disclaimer, and this is something that I feel is extremely important, you guys. If you are considering speaking or talking with a Ouija board or, you know, getting your friends around and talking with a Ouija board, this is my advice for you. It is serious, regardless or not if you believe, regardless or not if you want to get involved with this sort of thing. The Ouija board is a communicative tool to reach spirit in whatever form that it comes in. So use caution, um, use protection if you are going to use one or talk to someone who's used it, uh, such as a psychic medium or someone who's more accredited with using the Ouija board. I mean, of course, if you come to this channel because you're like, I don't believe in it whatsoever, I think it's a hoax. Okay, good. That's good for you to believe and that's fine. You never ever have to use the board. I completely understand. We welcome all people to this channel. I'm talking mostly for the people who are curious about about it and who, you know, want to use it but have never used one before, just exercise caution because, of course, with this channel, I really truly do believe in spiritual situations and that spirit does show us and reveal itself to us in time. The problem is, is that with Ouija boards, you never know whom you're speaking to or what you're speaking to um, because nine times out of 10, you can't see the entity, you can't know the entity, you have no idea what's going on with the situation. And the problem is, is that a lot of normal, regular people will think that this is a way to communicate. They have nothing else to back up their situation. They have no further proof that the entity that they're talking to is a positive entity or a negative entity. There's been a lot of talks too about the demonic possessions and about how the you know negative spirits will disguise themselves um, as you know regular spirits are be talking to you. So either way, you guys, I think it is best to exercise caution in any type of way. I, I mean, I say this to everyone, even if you're seeing psychic mediums, even if you're dabbling in spiritual, spiritual endeavors, always exercise caution. Sometimes it's basically to say this mildly, if you keep searching for the door, you're going to find the door at some point. It's going to show up and it's whether or not you want to open that into your life. The other thing I have to say is Ouija boards to be respectful of Ouija boards. So many people go into it thinking that it's a joke and it's really, really not. There has been a lot of cases where people have been negatively affected by Ouija boards. Um, you know, they had to get a shaman to clear the energy out of their home to get rid of the boards. They've had psychic mediums try to help. Um, you know, we talk about practitioners, witches, people who've tried to help cleanse that negative energy from people's lives, um, all kinds of things. So it's just good to definitely exercise caution when you are going to be using divination tools or spirit tools, because this is a serious situation of how you can communicate with spirit. Um, this is not to be taken lightly. And if you feel that there is something going on that's negative, or if you feel that someone is getting very caught up in using the Ouija board, it would be good to talk talk to someone about that or to confront that situation because you wouldn't want your friend or loved one to be taken advantage of or to be told that there is something going on that just isn't true. So those are my disclaimers with Ouija boards. That's part of the reason why I do not use Ouija boards myself, only because when you have such a connection to spirit, I would prefer to have a positive view about it instead of a negative view. And let's be honest, you guys, I am a scared person. I do 
do not want no demons or anything, you know, bad spirits coming up in my house. I don't want none of that. I don't want to deal with bad spirits. That's not my idea of a good time. You know, certainly wouldn't want my dining room table levitating, you know, or candles going out. That's just not my idea of a good situation. So that is why I don't use a Ouija board in my divination practices. I do not do that because I don't believe that that is a good way to communicate or a good way to bring positivity and light into other people's lives. Um, other people feel differently and that's completely fine. Just from my personal opinion, I would not use it. Um, a couple of other things too that I'd like to point out. If you are using scrying or pendulum work, it's always good to, um, you know, protect yourself with either white candles, salt, um, dipping the pendulum oftentimes in holy water also does create that kind of barrier. Um, you know, cleansing yourself or the board um, can also help too for scrying, um, for pendulum work. For the Ouija board, I would suggest that you do cleanse the space if you are going to use one and communicate. I would also suggest that you bring light into the room. Would I suggest you turning off the lights? No, because at the end of the day, you want to enter and have things that are positive come to light. And you want to be able to see what is going on in the room instead of, you know, thinking that there could be something else in the room or scaring yourself or scaring other people in the process of what is going on. Okay, and I'm talking to all my stars out there who like to be, you know, pranking people. Listen, you do not want to prank somebody with a Ouija board. I'm just letting you know that right now. It is not a good time and it's not something that should be taken lightly. So that's kind of my little disclaimer about that, about protecting yourself and protecting the board. So basically that is the history of what I found in the Ouija boards. There is still a lot of research that is ongoing, you guys, about basically what is happening with the Ouija boards and with what, you know, is happening with them. How do we view things now more psychologically and mentally than what we used to, um, so that's still happening even now today where there's a lot of research being done on it and a lot of people are looking into it. So what we're going to do for the second part of this video is we are going to be doing some oracle. We are going to be doing some of the mystical orb oracle that I have, which is similar to a Ouija board, but not the same thing, obviously. Um, a lot of people were telling me, come on, let's use it. Uh, no, you guys, listen, I'm not that type of person. I hope you don't unsubscribe to the channel, but I am not inviting no bad spirits in the house. You know what I mean? We, we got enough with that as it is. I don't want to be a part of that. And you guys can make the decision for yourself, obviously, if you want to. So I'm going to start with um, Moonology Oracle cards. I wanted to be using these in my previous videos for a long time, you guys. I haven't had a chance to. And then I am also going to use the new oracle that I have purchased, which is the Season of the Witch. I'm also going to be using this in another one of my pick-a-card readings um, that I'm going to be doing this week. I also um, did purchase the Nightmare Before Christmas, um, basically the tarot for them. So I'm going to also be using that too. And then at the end, we will get clarification on what you guys are asking. So I'm going to start with the Season of the Witch um, Oracle cards. And these are so pretty, you guys. I don't know. I like cards that are different a lot so that we can use them. So what I want you guys to do is think of something in your mind that you are needing an answer about. Um, and it could be a yes or no answer. It could be a um, you know, specific name, person, situation that you're trying to get through, whatever the situation is, you can um, think of that now. Also wanted to talk a little bit about this, you guys, that the Ouija board has also been used a lot in popular culture for clothing, jewelry. Um, you know, their Ouija boards can still be purchased. Um, even in this time period, I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen Ouija boards around, um, 
and seen them in stores and things like that. I don't know how much of them are being sold even today. That I didn't look up a lot. Um, but definitely, you know, they are still sold, just so you know. I've seen a lot of jewelry depicting Ouija boards and things like that. So that was kind of interesting also. So we'll pick three cards here, and then I will pick three of the Moonology cards to kind of clarify also what's going on there. So we have, well, if this isn't scary enough, you guys, so we have um, the Banshee. Okay, now I'm going to tell you right now, I think that Spirit's trying to tell us something with this, because if y'all want to be using the Ouija board in not the right way, this is what's going to come out after you. Okay, I'm telling you, you don't want this. I'm telling you, nobody wants this at any time in their life. Anyway, this card um, has the number five attached to it um, for numerology purposes, which five indicates a lot about conflict, um, a lot about overcoming conflict, a lot about having to deal with darker uh, energies or spirit energies. So that is something to think about too, if you were thinking about anything having to do with that. So this card says, heed my warning, dear child, for what I hold is far from unsung lullaby. Swallow a nail and you can expect bleeding from within. Well, that's a nice card. Anyway, um, the way that I kind of take this um, is a couple of different things. The first is that um, you should protect yourself. And I think that that's the most important thing that we can get from this. The other thing is, is that you have to also think about how this will affect you negatively. So if you're trying to use a situation to your advantage or use a situation not in the correct way, basically you are going to be inviting a whole host of dark energy into your situation that might not be happy, okay, or might not be positive for you, especially if you go against your grain and things like that. Um, you know, the, the other thing is, too, is I think that this card more so often than not, and especially with us talking about the Ouija board, that a lot of people want to kind of, you know, everybody wants to go to the dark side nowadays. You know, I don't know if they got, you know, the saying where, you know, come to the dark side, we have cookies. Everybody wants to go to the dark side. Everybody is curious about it. I mean, I don't even know why after, you know, seeing this at your doorstep. I don't know who would be curious about it, but a lot of people are. And the thing is, is that you have to know who to trust and you have to know that if you do dabble and you're not prepared, uh, you know, this is what's going to happen. I'm not saying that you should be swallowing nails or doing anything like that, but I think it's a warning to the fact that if you're not educated and if you don't have all of the information at your disposal, then that's pretty much what's going to happen to you. So know who to trust, even if you are going to dabble. Understand that there are consequences to that also, too, you guys. So we also have here apples. Um, this is kind of interesting, too, because we talk about apples um, with knowledge. We talk about, um, you know, apples in the fall time and what those actually mean and things like that. So this says, to taste, one must swallow it whole. And beneath the satin flame hides drowning water. So what I think is interesting about this, too, is that this, to me, speaks a lot about drowning sorrows, drowning, pain, gaining knowledge about information or gain knowledge about the situation that you guys were asking about um, in regards to this. And I think that we have to take knowledge as a tool, as power. Instead of thinking that we can live in fantasy forever. Sometimes that's not always the case in this situation. So definitely using that um to kind of think of that too, or using knowledge in the situation is also helpful. Not surprised by this card because this talks about ancestors. We've been talking a lot about the Ouija board and communicating with those who have passed on. Halloween is approaching, so the veil is thinning here. Um, so if you guys have been thinking about talking to past loved ones, or if you've been thinking about connecting in some type of way, now is the time to do that, to connect to that more positive energy from those that have passed on, or to let go of things things that are holding you back a lot from what has happened in the past. 
So this talks about they hiss of quivering so deep only roots of your soil can lift the nakedness hidden within the vows made in silence. An ancient chill walking upon the spine. So what this basically means is, is that coming to terms with death, coming to terms with what has passed, um, we can't change the past, you guys. So if you guys were thinking about a past on loved one, if you were thinking about a past situation, if you were thinking about, you know, what is going on, then this would be a good card to kind of symbolize that along with the apple card, along with the knowledge, and along with knowing when something is negative, to be able to walk away from it, to be able to move on from it. Also, to communicating with spirit is a great way to kind of do that and to figure out things. So those um, were kind of some of the messages that we can take from that. I'm going to quickly, you guys, use the Moonology cards. I'm probably only going to pull three of them also um, because I don't want the video to run kind of too long and be boring, you guys, because that's just not what I want to do. Um so we'll kind of build upon that of what those three cards were basically meaning um, and then kind of go from there of what's going on, you know, and, and you guys, I have to say, I'm all about the positivity lately. Um, there's enough negativity in this world, okay, of what is going on with people. So I'm all about the positive. If you guys got some positive vibes you want to send people, um, you know, go ahead. If you guys want to connect with spirit because of that ancestors card, I would suggest that now would be the time to do it. So what do we got? So we have the waxing moon, which is interesting. So this is talking about gaining momentum, moving forward with what you're asking about and being able to move on or move to a different situation or move to a different state of mind in regards to that. Yeah, so the full moon in Pisces is balancing spirituality and practicality. And let me tell you guys, we've been talking about this with the Ouija board also, that this is important to balance what is real and what is fiction. So to balance that out, to balance yourself out spiritually, um, you know, we've passed the full moon in Aries. So now we're going to probably going be going towards another different moon or a different situation. I don't know what the moon is going to be on Halloween. I could check that out for you guys and let you know. And then, of course, we have the eclipse, um, the new moon eclipse, which is expecting powerful change. I think that what that basically means, you guys, is that if you are expecting to have a situation go in a different light, I think that Halloween is going to be the time when that occurs. I also think that you can change your energy and change your situation if you decide to change from within. Um, I'm also going to be taking up here the... Um, Crystal Oracle. This is similar because it has the yes, no's on there. It has a lot of things. I love this thing to use this for my readings and for other things. And plus, because, listen, I'm a glitter freak, you guys. This is like my favorite thing. It sparkles, whatever. So, um... If you guys want to build upon the readings of the cards that I gave you, you can ask a question right now, and then we can kind of see what the answer is. Wow. I'm trying to read what that actually says. Okay. So basically, in other words, this says something that is unhealthy or something that is negative. So something that is negatively affecting you, you guys, or you feel is unhealthy has to change at some point. It has to be um, dealt with and you have to basically move on from that. The other thing that's interesting about this too is that kind of stripping the negativity from you also would be very, very helpful. And that could occur, you know, after Halloween on the new, on when the new moon occurs, it can occur on Halloween. Um, if you want to speak to spirit on that, on a cleansing, that would also be good as well. I hope, my stars, that you guys did enjoy this video. As always, please comment down below, like or subscribe to the channel. If you guys are like, listen, I'm so tired of hearing you talk, then, you know, you can comment that too. I, I take all advice from people. If you guys want to see more 101s, um, if you guys want to see more pick cards, something else that's different, please let me know. I am going to be thinking about doing some different videos for next year also to um, do some different 101s that come up. Um, 
and things like that. But definitely let me know either way and I will talk to you all soon.